improving a snoozer can be difficult, so we've developed 11 ways to help optimize your game. This is Break From Life. If you want to increase your chances of winning at snooker, there's a lot to think about. So we split that down into 11 easy steps. We've split that down into two checklists along a 7 to 4 ratio. This is the first of them. The Break From Life improves your snooker checklist. Later we will show you how to weaken your opponent's game as well in ways that aren't just allowed in the rules but are totally accepted and to a large extent encouraged. So welcome back fellow members of the Snooker Collective and if it's your first time watching then it's fantastic to have you here. We post videos to YouTube to help you improve at snooker like this one about Tiam Chalk. It's designed to prevent kicks and I've had it for about three months so I did a review of it. It's in the card at the top right now. And if you don't want to miss important videos like that, then why not subscribe to the channel? So if you see on the Break From Life Improve Your Snooker checklist, there's nothing more important than choosing the correct shot. Choosing the correct shot is massively important to optimizing your game. And here's a few examples. We could take the easy red over the middle pocket, but the position would be hard. So for me, I'm playing the red by the black. So I have an easy black. I can then get onto this next red. And then I can easily score about 14 points very simply. I even manage to get the pack open and get on the next red. Important, nobody can ever tell you the correct shot you should play as an individual player. For some people here, the correct shot may be to roll as the reds, or they will feel confident playing a cannon onto the red over the pocket in some way. But for me, I've played the attacking safety shot that does have an element of risk, but it did make this next shot incredibly difficult. So for me, that was the correct shot. So the best advice I can give to you when you're choosing a shot is to be attacking and choose the shot that gets you the greatest amount of value, scores you the most amount of points, and costs you the least amount of risk. How to aim a shot correctly was one of the first videos we made on improving your snooker on this channel. Check it out, it's in the card now. It's a video that takes you through everything you need to know about how to aim. Being able to line up a shot correctly is useless unless you have a good technique. So let's look at the basics of what I do when I play a shot. As I'm right-handed, I start off by placing my right foot directly on the line of the shot. Then I use my cue to make sure it's in the correct place directly behind it. I then use, place my left foot with my knee outwards so my body can't twist easily on the shot. I then place my hand on the table keeping my elbow bent. I use push both my elbows outwards at this stage. Then I play the shot. If you place your hand on the table, drag your knuckles up and your thumb in, you have the basic type of bridge that almost every single snooker player uses, and there's a reason for that. It's the most accurate way to play a shot. You don't see a lot of people in snooker using a closed bridge similar to this, because your hand can rock all over the place. The only place you do see him using it is on a cushion. I don't usually like to use it here, I usually like to just run it underneath my thumb because I find it a little bit more wobbly, but that's up to each individual player. Using different pace and spin on a shot can be critical to your success. Look at the different amount of ways I can pop this blue. To start off with I can make the blue simple by just dropping it in or playing a bit firmer to make sure it doesn't roll off, it's not all tables are flat. Now if I want to play for the red, there are a number of different ways I can get on it, from the simple one cushion like that, just by getting the weight right, or I can start using backspin on the ball to get down the other side of the table. Same shot on the red two different ways. And I can get on the red three ways if I can play this shot correctly. Slightly overhead it, but I'm still on the red. 
practice all these shots to build up your knowledge of what is the easiest shot for you. And speaking of knowledge, understanding the game will make it a lot easier. For example, I could pop this red and play for the black, but watch what happens if I just play this white slightly below centre and play a stun shot. It stays exactly where it is and leaves me a straight shot on the pink. I do the same thing again on the pink and I've got exactly the same shot on the next red. Easy pot on the next red again leaves me the same shot again on the pink. Now this time I've got to run it through just a little bit but it's a simple shot again and that's 14 without doing anything. And look, I'm exactly in the same place as I was earlier but I've scored 14 points. Now I'm playing back over this side of the black. Why? Knowledge of the game. Because when I pop the black from this side, I come in on a line directly towards the yellow rather than across it as I would from the other side. And even though I play it badly, look at the difference between being, me being here and on the other side of the table for this pot on the yellow. I managed to pot it so I can clear the colours. Now understanding where you want the white to go when you are clearing the colours is absolutely critical and something we'll look at in a future video. And it can make it a lot easier to just play basic shots when you're in a high pressure situation at the end of a game. Being able to optimise your positional shots will give you better shot choices like we explained earlier and will reduce the cost to you in terms of risk of shot. It's not just understanding the game that can help you, it's also understanding the rules. We made this video about how to play jump shots and which jump shots are allowed in the rules. It even has Jan Vahas. Have a look now, it's in the card at the top. Important, knowledge is power, so optimise it. You can also optimise your ability to deal with outside factors, factors like pressure. If I drop this white on the table, or on the cushion on the table, it doesn't feel any pressure to fall. It will fall no matter what. Now, pressure is to some extent a human factor, and isn't real, it's just your body trying to help you make better decisions. Most people think being under pressure makes you clumsy, when in fact it just makes you lose focus. And being able to focus is the way you can fight outside factors. And we're going to be looking at ways at how you can successfully do this in future videos. So if you want to keep up to date with them, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Because there's a chance you may miss something critical, and chance is very much the key factor. For our final topic on the Improve Your Snooker Checklist, your ability to use chance to your advantage. For example, every time a red hits the outside of a table, it has about a 5% chance of going in a pocket. So this shot may be unlikely unless you hit a lot of balls towards a cushion. Now things like this won't help you at all in a game of snooker, but what will is cutting an element of chance out of the game as much as possible. And you can do that by doing the previous six steps as well as possible. Particularly your use of pace is important because a lot of the time you will notice that people get away with a lot of things because they have the pace of the table. And now for the final four things, we've got to look at the break from life, weaken your opponent checklist. Now, we can make our opponent shot harder, but ideally we don't want to give them one in the first place. Now, obviously if we have got to give them a shot, distance is your friend. Keep them as far away from the balls they've got to play as possible. And if you can, snooker them. It's the name of the game and your way of making sure your opponent never has a good shot. Playing shots that are attacking can really cause your opponent's problems as well as them not feel good about playing their own shots. Like attacking safety shots like earlier, continuously going for pots as long as they don't cost you anything in risk 
and trying to always play shots that open the balls and create an open game. These can cause your opponents to lose confidence in their own ability. Now being robotically consistent isn't easy, but it will cause your opponent to lose confidence if you're continuously getting the shots you are going for. And if your opponent doesn't think you're going to do anything stupid or miss at all, this puts a huge amount of pressure on their own game. And if all else fails, just being positive around the table can worry your opponents in some way, as well as helping you focus on what you need to do. Now, no, no matter how difficult the shot is, just going about it in a way that looks like you're enjoying the challenge can bring huge benefits and can make it look like you're still trying in a game and you're still trying to win and that the game is still on and you haven't completely given up on it and it's going to be just an opportunity for your opponent to block balls. Now I'm aware this video hasn't covered any of these subjects in any huge amount of detail but this is something we are going to be looking at doing in the future and have already started. We are reviewing the latest products as well as giving you advice and tips on how you can optimize your game for the best chance of winning. So if you don't want to miss any of that, why not subscribe to the channel? We've got videos like this, impossible snooker shots made easy, as well as break building, snooker, how to make a kill break. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.